I went on a trip a while, a while back. I can't say how long ago it was. You can put a picture up, Jamie. I can't say how long ago, but I went on a trip a while back. I can't say who I was with. And, and I can't say where we were at. But I went on a trip. <laughs> I went on a trip a while back, right? So I can't tell you how long ago it was because if I tell you, you might be like, oh, Pastor, you should have been delivered by then. So it, it could have been 10 years ago. It could have been 10 weeks ago. It could have been recently. But I went on a trip with, with some people. And, and, and I can't disclose, Trina, who the people were. Right? I can't disclose who they were because sometimes I've been told that people don't like being in my message sometimes. I've been told, Marcus, I got to get permission before I put people in my message, so I can't disclose who I was with. Let's just say I was with some people that I truly care about. All right. All right. Amen, somebody. So don't judge pastor, right? And, and I declare to you that we were on this trip having a phenomenal time, and, and, and we, we, we went to, to get on a ride, and as we got in the line for the ride, the line was like, I don't know, hour, hour and a half long. So we was just sitting there, you know, enjoying, you know, standing in line. But at some point in time, we got a little impatient of standing in line. And as we were going through the line, we, 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 we saw an opening. We'll call it an opening. <laughs> uh, perhaps somebody forgot to, to, to take the rope and extend the rope. But we saw an opening that led to the lightning line. And as we saw, I guess I can't disclose where I was at, but as we saw the, the opening that, that, that led to, 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 the, to the lightning line, uh, one of the members in my, in my group, I can't disclose who that was, but they said, if we can go that way and we can get, get to the line faster. And one of the members in my group was like, like trying to encourage us, like, like to me, she's like, they go to the lightning line, it's open, like nobody's there, there's nobody watching, nobody guarding it, let's just go there. And, 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 and I looked, and, and I had a lot of different things going through my mind. Like, okay, I'm a man of God. I'm the pastor. Like, is this right? Is it not right? Is, is God, did God make an opening for me? He just put a ram in the thicket. Maybe this is God saying, TJ, you don't got to stand in line. Like, I had a lot going through my mind, Stacy. And the person I was with said, come on, let's go. And, and, and they went. And I watched them walk. And I, I, I had that moment of, of, of conflicting values going through my mind and the person went and, and I declared was, there was a, a, a group of people from my group who went with that person. I can't disclose who it was, right? And, and I declare to you, but there was a group of people, uh, Marcel, who stayed with me and looked at me to see what I would do. And as I saw them briskly walking through the lightning line and we were still standing still, I said, man, they moving. We, we standing still. And I waited for a, a moment, Joseph, to see if they would come back. And, and, and as I waited, I didn't see him come back. So I said, God, maybe this is your way of saying, TJ, I've, I've created an opportunity for you. <laughs> Take advantage of the opportunity of a lifetime and a lifetime of the opportunity. And so I declared that, that, that I, I grabbed the wheelchair of the person. I can't disclose who I was pushing. I was pushing, and, and I went through the opening. And the group who had stayed back with me saw me go through the opening and went through the opening with me. I'm like, okay, praise God. God. God has delivered us to the lightning lane. Hallelujah. And we were walking, no problems. And then we got towards the end, towards the end of the line or the front of the line, and, and, and there was a, a place where you had to scan. And we froze. And everybody, Marcus, looked at me, and I froze. I like they, they're gonna check us, and we we ain't got to. So immediately we we, we tried to come up with an idea, and the person I was with, I can't disclose their name, but they was like, just 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 tell them, you know, you you had to push. You know, such and such, and, and they, I, I like, all right, so I came out and said, yeah, we, so I got, you know, she's in the, so I, it was like, hold on, let, let, let me check and see you. I, I scanned it, and it went red. And everybody watching, I'm like, hold on, 
Try, try it again. And, and, and the young guy said, I said, man, we already up here. He said, no, hold on. Let me, hello, we got a group up here. Uh, we're not sure how they got up to the front. Did you guys send them up to the front? Okay, all right. All right, thank you. I'm, I'm God, if this, was you, if this was you, God, like, just, just tell them to say, it's okay. You know, sometimes you figure like, you know what? You shouldn't have done it. Grace and mercy, go ahead. Young kid, probably like 22 years old, small, you know what I'm saying, ain't very big. I'm like three times his size. He has true confidence. Came up, you're going to have to go back. I'm like, you're not, you're not, a t- you're not, a, you're not, you're not. <laughs> go back. And I declare to you as, as a group that I was with, which I can't disclose who they were, but as, as we, I, I grabbed the wheelchair, I turned it around, as we walked back, it was the walk of shame. We walking like everybody just looking like, why y'all walking back? And one of the individuals I was with was like, I ain't, I'm not ashamed, I'm good. I, I said, cool. And I, and I was trying to, you know how they say when you, when you do something wrong, like hold your head high? I was trying to hold my head high. Like don't even, don't even look at me. You have, you have no idea what happened. It was a confusion, misunderstanding. It's what happened. And we went all the way forward and then we went all the way back. Listen very carefully. All forward movement isn't right movement. Just because you're moving forward doesn't move, mean you're moving forward in the right way. So you have to ask yourself, am, I'm getting more, am I getting more the way I'm supposed to be getting more? If I'm moving forward, am I moving forward the way God wants me to move forward? Because if you move forward in the wrong way, you're eventually going to have to go back. And you're going to waste more time than you would have if you would have been patient and waited on the Lord to open the door for you. Don't try to manipulate the opportunity to say that God gave it to you because you're too impatient to wait on God. God doesn't need you to be God. God is God all by himself. God will tell you when there's an opportunity for you, you will know without a shadow of a doubt. There'll be no questioning. You'll know this is my opportunity. So don't be in such a hurry to move forward that you get caught and now you're going backwards. I declare that when we went back and we got back in the line, we stood there for a very long time and we still enjoyed the ride, but we wasted time going forward because we eventually had to go backwards. Some of you are at a place right now where you feel like you're where you want to be, you're where you need to be. But the question is, are you going to have to go back because there's something you didn't accomplish back there? My, uh, somebody I care about. <laughs> Sorry. I almost, I almost got caught up, Jamie. Somebody I care about was on the phone talking to somebody else I care about. And the person was like, I- I'm sick and tired of, 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 uh, they were sick and tired of me, here we go, okay, sick and tired of me taking up so much space. Now, all you Android people in the, in the room, I, you told me this was, a, this was a safe place, so don't come for me today, so not today. God got my back, right, in the Legion of Angels. So, an individual was talking to another individual about me, and they were, and, and, and I, I think I could be transparent here, my wife, <laughs> amen, was talking to one of my sons, and he was saying, I'm sick and tired of dad taking up so much space. Yeah. You see, with our iPhones, we have what's called the family plan. And when I bought my phone, Mama Tyus, I, I made sure, because I take pictures and videos, like I speak, I, I made sure I want to get the two, is that, is that, what is that called? Two terabytes. Am I right, Jamie? I, I, I wanted to make sure that I get the one that's, that's high. I need two. I, I give me two. And so I got the two terabytes. And if, and if you look at the picture here, uh, we were getting a message. All right, Jamie, I just said safe place. We were getting a message that, 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 that we was full. And so Trey Day and Zell could not download or upload photos to the iCloud because the iCloud was and, 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 and if you see, uh, uh, most of my, <laughs> what was taken up is photos. 
and that's all yellow, and then blue is back up. Now, you can't see it, but you see, I'm, I'm colorblind, but I believe that's a, is that green or teal, whatever, whatever. we're going to go with that light color, right? So, so, so if you look at the circle, you see family, but when you look at the bar, you don't, can you see? And so I got a message that said, your iCloud storage is full. You can upgrade your iCloud plus plan to make sure your apps and service keep syncing to iCloud. So the Apple is telling me that it will not sync anymore. So anything you add going forward will not sync because you're full from the past. But we have options. Somebody say options. So, so, so it says, I, I, I went to Google, I Googled it, tell me where to go. So it says, you can free up storage. So it told me to review large files. You have 63.9 gigabytes of large files. Review and keep only the ones you need. Apple was telling me that, that, that the storage that I have what I've been storing for the last 10, the last 15, the last 20 years is so full, it's affecting my entire family. It's okay. You missed that. That was your praise spot. It's okay. It, it, so much, let me say this way, so much baggage, so much negativity, so much hurt, whatever I've dealt with as the head of my household that I have not got rid of, it is now affecting my entire family. So Apple says... In order for your family to sink, in order for your family to receive the new that God has for them, I need you to review your large files. Let me say it this way. I need you to review your trauma. I need you to review what you hold on to because it's so large, it's affecting your sons, it's affecting your daughter. You need to review it and you need to delete what you do not need. Some of you in this room, some of you watching online, you have some trauma, some negativity, some baggage that you do not need. And until you review it and delete it, it will continue to affect your family. I believe we call that generational curses. And then Apple gave me an option. It said, you can get started now. But I declare, when I decided to get started and I realized how long it was going to take, how much effort and energy, I said that I would do it later. Somebody say, do it later. Some of you have some trauma and some baggage, some negativity that you're holding on to, and you keep saying, I'll do it next week. I'll do it next month. I'll do it next year. You're holding on to it. You're not getting rid of it, and it's tearing your family down. But as I sat there and I thought about the fact that Trey, Zay, and Zell could not upload or sync new photos and, and videos, I realized that my stubbornness was affecting my family. Your unwillingness to deal with your past trauma, your past pain, the people you're angry with is selfish because it's affecting your wife, it's affecting your husband, it's affecting your children, it's affecting your church. So I needed to get started now. And I declare to you, I didn't try to upgrade. I didn't try to buy more. I went through and said, what do I not need that I can get rid of so I free up space for my children? So then I decided to delete some stuff. And once those were deleted, now you can see my family. You see, when I was full, you couldn't see my family. Go back, Jamie. Go back. Go back. Go back. When I was full, you can't even see family on the bar graph because I was taking up so much. When I'm full of all the baggage from my past, I can't see or hear what's going on with Trey Zell, Trey Zazel, and Erich because I'm too full of the past. I can't see their pain. I can't see their hurt. I can't see that they need me because I'm too full of myself. I can't see Valissa's hurting when Valissa's hurting because I'm too full. You can't even see family because you're full of yourself. 
You're too selfish to deal with what you don't want to deal with. But when I freed up space, When I free those space, my children are like, whoa, let's go, Dad. I, got, I, I can download now. I got space now. But it all started with me because I'm the primary person on the account. I'm the person that started it. So I'm the person that has to finish it. How many of you in this room are the person in your family that has the power to change everything for your family? but you have not done it because you have not decided to get started with dealing with the past. The things you're still attached to become anchors to your loved one's freedom. The things you're still attached to become anchors to your loved one's freedom. I was talking to a person I care about, about another person I truly care about, and I was talking about the fact how they had lost their temper. And when they lost their temper, and, and I talked about it two weeks, a couple weeks ago, as so I can say his name, but, but Trey had lost his temper. And Trey's 21 now, and I was confused, Mark. It's like, like, like I don't understand. Like, he sees that I, I'm patient, and, I, and my temper's not the same. And, and then my wife said, but, but Trey grew up in a house with you when you didn't have control of your temper. See, the you that you are now that has control of your temper, that has patience and kindness, he didn't grow up with that person. You're that person now, but he was already out of the house. So he only knows what he grew up with. So he's going to respond, he's going to behave by what he saw, not what you... The things you're still attached to become anchors to your loved one's freedom. So in order for those I love and care about, in order for my church to gain freedom, I have to gain freedom. Be angry, but sin not. There's nothing wrong with anger. It's what you do when you become angry. Aries times. It's what you do when you become frustrated. You, you can be upset. You can be sad. But what do you do with that feelings? Be purposeful, not emotional. Have feelings, but don't let feelings have you. Let's get to the word. John 5, 1 through 9. I want to teach today. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bathsheba, in which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. How many years? I, I, I want to take my time, if you don't mind. I want you to catch that, that it said that a great number of disabled people were in that environment. And when we come in this sanctuary, there's a great number of people who were born in sin and shaped iniquity. Let me do it this way. There's a great number of people in the sanctuary, if you wouldn't tell the truth, who have some trauma they're dealing with, who have some pain they're dealing with. There's a great number of people in the sanctuary who need healing. Amen. Verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition. I love it. I love it. He said, in this condition, for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? I'm going to stay right there. Because <laughs> that was your praise part. You just, you just didn't catch it. Do you want to get well? Or let me say it this way. Do you want to hear a good message and get motivated? Do you want to feel good or do you want to get well? There's a difference, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I feel phenomenal. Pastor Thomas preached a phenomenal word. Pastor, I, I feel phenomenal. We, we're not concerned about your feelings. We're concerned about you getting well. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred while I'm trying to get in. There is no try. It's either do or don't. I raised my kids on the principle, there's no try. Dad, I tried. Don't tell me you try. You either do it or you don't. But I failed. No problem. I'll take failure. You keep trying. You keep doing it until you... When 
when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up. I love it. I don't know about your, but your, your Bible, my Bible has an explanation point. Jesus said, get up. I'm talking to somebody today. Get up. Get up. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. I love it. At once, the man was cured. I'm sorry, did I read that wrong? In two weeks, does it say two weeks? Does it say a month later? A, a year later? At once, immediately, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. Jesus said, get up. He's talking to somebody in the States today, today, some young lady, some young man. He's saying, get up, pick up your mat and walk. As I sat down and I studied this over and over, I realized that this gentleman was an invalid, which means he couldn't walk. And I realized that he was laying on a mat. I think it said for 30, how many years? 38 years been laying on that mat. And I find it striking that Jesus said, pick up your mat. Pick up the thing you've been laying on for 38 years and walk. He didn't just say, get up and walk. He said, pick up the thing you've been dependent on. Pick up the thing that you... Pick up your crutch. Pick up the thing you've been... Pick up your excuse. I'm going to stay right there. I'm going to stay right there. Pick up your excuse and walk. But, but, but there's nobody to put me in the water when it's stirred. Pick up your excuse and walk. But my son, pick up your excuse and walk. But my daughter, pick up your excuse and walk. But my wife... Pick up your excuse and walk. But pastor, my husband won't. Pick up your excuse and walk. But my father wasn't in my life. Pick up your excuse and walk. But my mother, pick up your excuse and walk. I remember I used to tell my wife, I said, why are you? I said, because my dad. She said, why are you so aggressive? Because my dad was aggressive. Well, TJ, why are you yelling? Because my dad yelled. Pick up your excuse and walk. Just because Anthony Tyus Sr. did it does not mean Anthony Tyus Jr. has to do it. Pick up your excuse and walk. We have power over those things which we were once dependent on. We have power over it. But we have to activate the power we have over the thing that we have used as an excuse for much too long. We aren't powerless because we want to be. We're powerless because we, have, because we keep losing. Now, I want you to catch this. We aren't powerless because we want to be. We're powerless because we keep losing. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. You see, when we were in the regular lane <laughs> and we wanted to go to the lightning lane, I had what's called competing values. Did I want to be patient? Or did I want to be impatient? At that moment, when I saw my friend walk through the lightning line, that impatient spirit, hmm, let me back up, let me back up. Hmm. Let me, let me, let me, I'm going to talk to Marcus for a minute. I hear the amen back there. That impatient spirit that I didn't deal with in 1999, that I didn't deal with in 2000, 2001, two, three, four, five. That impatient spirit that I did not deal with, that I did not free up. When it came time to make a decision between leaving the line that I was supposed to be in to going the line that I wasn't supposed to be in, that impatient spirit said, follow him. And I knew I was wrong. So I lost again to competing values what do you value the most in the moment when it's time for you to make a decision that can change your life? Or oh, see, see, some of y'all thinking, Pastor, you, 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 you're taking it too far. It, it, it was just, it was just, it was just a, a part. It's not going to change your life. But I declare to you that, that, that the people I was with, <coughs> excuse me, the people I was with saw the head. They saw the leader walk out of line and get in the, and they experience the, and the. <laughs> so at that moment, my decision 
planted a seed that could affect them for years to come. So I had to two things. I had to uproot that seed, and I got to plant new seeds on what to do when you're faced with a decision to make the right decision. You see, I declare to you that, that because, and I can say her name, but because Aries uh, has a condition, <laughs> because she has a condition, we were able to go to, go, go to uh, customer service and we were able to get, get uh, 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 opportunities to go on certain rides and get in the fast lane. But we had to pick which rides we want to get on and we had to pick what time we want to get on the ride. And when we picked the time and we picked the ride, we went into the lightning lane and she scanned and we all went through. I'm going to stay right there. Hold on one second. You see, the guide, the person that was in charge of the lightning lane said to us, if she's the one with the pass, she has to go first. Which means that once Aries scanned, everybody that was with Aries can go through. But she had to be the first person to scan because she's already been clear. I declare to you there's some places you can't go because God does not want you to be there. But if you are following God and you're doing what Jesus has called you to do, when you let Jesus go first, you get to go through too. So we didn't have to cheat or manipulate. All we had to do was say, okay, what does Aries have? Aries has A, B, C, and D. Well, guess what? We can only do A, B, C, and D. But I want to do E. You can't do E because Aries, I mean, because Jesus didn't tell you to do that. So we didn't have to cheat. As a matter of fact, I believe, and I could be wrong for this, we already went on a ride. We were going a second time with a different group. But God, like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm a God of order. I'm a God of order. I gave you the lightning pass for Aries. So you're getting on the rides with Aries. If you're not with Aries, mm. <laughs> if you're not with G-O-D, you can't go. If you're not rolling with God, but God, I want you, 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 you can go if you want to, but you're not going to the lightning lane. You can try to circumvent it if you want to, but you're going to be doing this. You're going to be walking back. You, you, you're trying to go forward without me. If you try to go forward without God, you're eventually going to go back. Oh, I'm winning. Yeah, you are winning in the world, but you're not winning in the spirit. You're going to go back eventually. Don't worry about it. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not going to call out names, but look at social media. Look at the rap world right now. Look at... Oh, you're winning right now, but eventually people are going to be... Why you, why you going back? <laughs> you started from the bottom, now I'm here, and now I'm, and now I'm back at the bottom. <laughs> what happened? You didn't do it with God. Mm. Competing values, Matthew 16, 22 to 23. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. He just turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. The reason why we struggle making the right decision in the right moment is because of competing values. When we were in line for the second time, because my group of friends, Trina, wanted to get on a ride, we didn't have in mind Aries, we had in mind the group of people we were with. Because if we had in mind Aries, we would be getting on the rise that Aries are already approved to get on. We would, I, I, Jamie, I, I, I promise you, every, every, every ride we got on with Aries, we <laughs> got on the ride. And we off. Like, man, you, how y'all get on the ride? She was already approved. She, she, she went to customer service because her, she already approved. We didn't have to wait because we went with the person we were supposed to go with. Competing values. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to help free you up. I want to make sure that you have some tangible things you can do when you're faced with making a decision based upon competing values. 
So at the very beginning, I said, I want to help you not be a counterfeit Christian, which means that you may look like a Christian. You may talk like a Christian. You may even sometimes act like a Christian. But when you're placed under the light, what is the light, Pastor? Rodney, the light means when I'm faced with an opportunity to respond as a godly man or as a worldly man, how will I respond? When I'm faced with an opportunity Right? To respond the way God has taught me to respond versus responding how I feel in the moment. That's when you're under the light. We call this the cap gap. K A P. Simply, some of us have the knowledge of Christ, some of us have the attitude, which means a state of mind. Like, I believe what I know. But oftentimes, there's a gap between knowledge, attitude, and practice. And we have to do the work to close the gap between knowing the Word of God, believing the Word of God, and actually practicing the Word of God. Because you can't truly be a genuine Christian by only knowing the Word of God. But only believe in the word of God. The Bible says that even Lucifer knows the word. Lucifer knows. And he believes like, that's, yep, that's Jesus. I know it's Jesus. He believes and he knows. But some of us believe and know, but we don't practice. So does that make us any better than? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. People are like, oh, pastor, sit up. I'm like, right, nope. If the devil knows and believes, you know and you believe but yet don't practice. Does that make you any better? Can you say you're a Christian? You can. You know why? Because Christian means you believe in Christ. But do you belong to the way? You see, in the Old Testament, they refer to it as belonging to the way, and that means a way of life. Are you just a Christian, or do you belong to the way of life? Do you practice? Do you practice the Beatitudes? Do you practice living like Christ? Some of you have the knowledge of Christ. Some of you believe in Christ. But few actually practice living like Christ on a daily basis. When you fail, it's cool. Get up and go again. When you fail, get up and go again. You have to continue to move forward day in and day out. You have to practice. Somebody say practice. Oh, come on. Let me do this. I, I, hate, to, I hate to do this. Um, Valissa, you, can, I, can I get my phone? I'm sorry, guys. I, this wasn't part of the message, and, and I, I got to do this because so every day I send messages, right, uh, via text message, right, to the boys. I send this to Trey. It says this, consistency is key. No results keep going. Bad results, keep going. Great results, keep going. Don't be afraid to start over. Greatness is about consistency. Keep going. Keep practicing. Keep pressing. So, so as we get ready to, to, to close, I'm, I'm going to give you three points. Before I get there, I hope we have a video, Jamie. But before I get there, I, pastors have been talking about Caitlin Clark, right? I want, let, let's go back. I want to connect the pastors last two weeks to this week. So Caitlin Clark, right? Uh, you can do the picture, Jamie. 76,000 potential WNBA earnings. How much money? Right? Watch this. And, and Jamie caught this, right? Well, so... 5,000, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I missed a comma. 5 million potential big three earnings. You guys with me so far? So then we see 3.6 million. I believe that's NIL, I believe. 1.8 million for Angel Reese, 1.1 million for Flage. Right? And, and, and I forgot my apologies, Jamie and Carl. I, I didn't have you do the other slide, but because Jamie caught it last week, right? 3.6 in NIL money, right? And she had 3.6, what was that, Jamie? 3.3 3, 3, 3, points. Right? There you go. There you go. 
3,668 points. Do you, do you see the correlation? She's getting paid 3.6 million NIL. She had 3,668 points. You with me? Somebody say practice. Somebody say practice. So we see what Kaitlyn Clark does in the light, but do we see what Kaitlyn Clark does in the dark? Go ahead, Jamie. I want y'all to watch this. All right, so you made 233 out of 300. This is kind of your routine. Yeah. How do you feel about 233? I think it's a good number. Threes were a little bit, not, I wouldn't say lower. I'll still take 63, but I want to be more so around 70 if I can. Yeah. Uh, 81 mid range is really, really good. Um, usually around 75 there. And anytime I can get to around 90 out of 100 free throws, I like that number. Repeat out to me I must have a private victory. Before I have a public victory. We listen, I ain't never been no Angel Reese. I'm not sorry, I never been a Caden Clark fan like that. As a matter of fact, I, 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 was, I was a fan of, uh, of uh, uh, Paige Beckers before Caden Clark. I didn't know who Caden Clark was, so I turned it on TV. Like, why are they showing this girl 24 7, right? There's another young lady from back in the day who got more points than Caden Clark before they even had threes. I'm not gonna go there right now. But the point is, we're talking about 3,768 points. You, you, you saw the math. You saw who was there, Kaylin Clark and her coach. There was no fans. There was nobody celebrating them. You were so concerned about being a Christian in public so you can be celebrated and congratulated, you can't even grow. You can't even grow. Somebody said, how is she so confident? I see why she's so confident. She'd already made 3,000 points in practice. 3,000 points in the game is easy. She already made it. Why is she getting paid so much money? Because of her practice? Why is she on TV so much? Because of her execution? Oh, you missed that. I, I saw a comment on social media that said, I'm sick and tired of hearing about Kaylin Clark. I bet you are. And you know why you keep hearing about her? Because she's executing. Practice, practice, practice. Kaylin Clark had the knowledge of a basketball player. She believed what it took to be great, and she practiced, K-A-P. She practiced until she... And from what I read, that's every day. Every day. And it's not a Caitlin Clark speech. This ain't no Caitlin Clark hot thing. I'm just saying, I tell all my clients, I study greatness, which means I don't just study preachers. I don't just study motivational speakers. I study, I study artists. Basketball players, I study swimmers, I study Michael Phelps. Why? Because if they're great, I can learn something great from somebody that's great. Close the gap. I'm going to give you three principles. I'm going to get you out of here. Number five, take Jesus at his word. If you are going to practice being a man and woman of God, the first thing you have to do is take Jesus at his word. Simple. John 4, 49 to 53. The royal official says, Sir, come down before my child dies. Verse 50, go, Jesus replied. Your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. Some of you pray to God and you pray and you fast and God gives you an answer and you don't take him at his word. He didn't say, but are you sure, God? Is he healed? He, he didn't wait till he got back. He said he took him out of his word and he departed. I don't need any further confirmation. I don't need my pastor to confirm it. I don't need my spouse to confirm it. I, I, I don't need no further confirmation. I took God at his word and I departed. 
While he was still on his way, his servants met him with news that his boy was... I, listen, I believe God so much that when God tell me it's done, I'm going to be walking and I'm thinking, did you hear? Like, I already know. I already know. How did you know? Because I took God at his word. I, you, didn't have, you didn't have to come tell me. I, I, I already knew. Because when God said it, that, it sealed it. Number two. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me, let me slow down. Let me slow down. 52, when he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Verse 53, then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. Bonzer, I, I, I declare to you that this is powerful because, number one, he took Jesus at his word. And then when he inquired us to the time that the child was healed, it was the exact time that Jesus said it, and he took him at his uh, Monique, can I declare to, to you that, 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 that you're not waiting on God to do anything. God's waited on you to take him at his word. Okay, it's okay. I'll talk to myself. <laughs> Where you at, Keisha? We're not waiting on God to do anything. God's waited on you to take him at his word. God said, he's healed. And I declare to you, at that moment, he was healed. And what's so powerful about that, Marcus, is that it said his whole family believed, which leads me to believe that they didn't believe before. They must didn't believe before because the word of God says, and so he and his whole fair household believe. If you're waiting for your household to believe like you believe, then you got to take God at his word and depart. Principle six. Take back your authority. Take back your authority. I declare to everyone in this room, I'm a dominionaire. I'm a dominionaire. I have dominion over my mind. I got dominion over my body. I got dominion over my house. I am a dominionaire. I'm a dominionaire. I, I was talking to, to someone I'm close to. And they was like, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I don't worry. I didn't, I didn't uh, uh, practice at this certain level because nobody else was at that level. <laughs> Jamie, if you know me, you, you know, <laughs> I got my, my, my hair on my head that you can't see stood up. I said, what? Excuse me? Come again? Say it again? In English this time? You said what? He said, what, what, what? Nobody else was at that level, so I didn't go. I said, when you walk into a dark room, do you wait for somebody else to turn the light on? Do you turn the light on yourself? Let me say it again. Let me slow it down. When you walk into a dark room, do you stand in the dark and say, well, nobody else turned it on, so I'm just going to wait. Somebody else come. No, no, no. You walk into a dark room and you turn the light on. I, I am a domain there. I'm not a thermometer. I'm a thermostat. I set the temperature. As I said, when I walk into an environment, I set the temperature. Not anybody else. I'm responsible for the temperature in my environment. Take back your authority. Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark 1, 23, 27. Just then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. Even the unclean spirits know. Verse 25, be quiet. Jesus says sternly, I love it. I actually say shut up. My mom said shut up is not, not a nice word. So now I got to be quiet. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out, with, out of him with a shirk, shirk. 
Verse 27, the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching? And with authority, he even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. You see, the Pharisees and Sadducees were not amazed about what Jesus knew because they knew too. They were amazed about his authority. Let me say it this way. The unclean spirits, the devil is not amazed by what you know. (laughs) Or should I say it this way? Ralph, the enemy is not intimidated by what we know. I'm going to stay right there. Sandra, the enemy is only intimidated when we have authority based upon what we know. You can have all the knowledge. You can know the word forward and back. You can go to church every weekend. You can go three times a week. You can, have, you can have, keep the Sabbath. You can, you can fast. You can do the whole, but, but, but you ain't got no authority. What you doing it for? <laughs> Just so you can say you did it? The devil like, yep, you know the word of God, but you ain't got no authority. Yep, you go to church, but you ain't got no authority. Yeah, you quoted that scripture, but you didn't quote it with authority. You didn't quote it with authority. I was in my house training and marketing some athletes. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, these three young ladies, they was, they, was, they was just being passive and intimidating. Like, I woe is me. I said, no, you got to have some. If you're going to be a phenomenal athlete, you got to have some authority. You got to believe that you're great. Not cocky. You got to be confident. Like, what do you mean? I said, watch this. I, I call, I call Trey. I said, Trey, who's the best athlete in the family? He said, me. <laughs> I hung up. I called Xavier. <laughs> Zay, who the best athlete in the family? Me. <laughs> I hung up. I called Vonzel. <laughs> Vonzel don't answer right away. <laughs> I said, he's, he's, on, he's on the game. I said, Vonzel. Who's best athlete in the family? Well, Dad, if you consider this and this, and you consider this, it's, it's got to be me. <laughs> and the girls in, the, in, my, in my weight room, they, they, they just laughing, right? And I said, hold on. I said, hold on. Hold on. Wait for it. I'm going to call Valissa. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, Valissa stopped playing sports in middle school. She did no sports in high school. Now, now all to my two oldest boys playing football on scholarship, Von Zell will be sometime soon, and we're going to see what Avery's going to do. Listen to me very carefully. Hey, sweetheart, just so you know, you're on speakerphone. Y'all didn't catch that. Let your girl know she's on speakerphone. You're on speakerphone. I have these people in the garage, so you know who's in the audience. I said, who's the best athlete in the family? <laughs> me. I hung up. She ain't playing the sports since she was like nine years old. Then I asked the girls, Keisha, I said, ask me the question. I said, I'm the best. And I mean that. At 42, like, don't get me. Like, I I, I might got to stretch a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? I might warm up a little bit more. But when I get warmed up, you know, I'm 40, I'll be 40. When I get warmed up, I'll take Trey Zanesdale. I will take them until they prove that I can't take them. And then if they do, if they do take me, I'm coming back for a second time, and a third time, and a fourth time, and a fifth time, and a sixth time. I have authority over what I believe in. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I act like it. I talk like it. I'm TJ Tyus. Don't be a Christian with no authority. That's a counterfeit Christian. It's a counterfeit Christian. Number seven, and this is probably one of my favorite ones. Here's my question. Are your friends securing your healing or reinforcing your feelings? There's a person that I'm real close to in my house. (laughs) And she's not concerned with my feelings. She's concerned with me being great. And that hurts. It's hard. 
is hard. She's not concerned with my feelings. And I don't say that in a negative way. She's not concerned with trying to make me feel good. She's concerned with trying to make me become great. Watch this, Matthew 9, 1 to 2. Jesus stepped into a boat. He crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. <laughs> I'm sorry, trying not to get too excited. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. You, listen, you, some of you missed your praise spot either because you didn't catch it or either because you don't got friends like that. He was healed when Jesus saw his friend's faith. It, it doesn't say he, he was healed when Jesus saw him. It said when he saw their faith. Do you got friends? Who secure your healing? Who just help you throw pity parties? Who make you feel good for doing something wrong? You need friends who challenge you. You need loved ones who call you out, who call you up, who call you forward, who are more concerned with your salvation They're making you feel good. And it will be uncomfortable. But I've come to learn in my last 42 years that if you're not comfortable enough to tell me when I'm wrong, to tell me to get up and walk, you're not really my friend. You're not really my friend. Not in the way God wants you to be. He was healed because of his friend's faith. I don't know about you, but I need friends like that. I want God to say, TJ, I, your, your friend was praying for you. You don't even know it. I'm going to bless you because your friend. There's some people that God removed from your life because of things they were doing in the dark that you didn't even know they were doing. And you fighting trying to get them back. But God, God like you. No, daughter, are you sure? Because there's some things they were doing that I knew about because I'm omnipresent that you don't know about, so I removed them. You need them, you don't need... Last one. There are things you haven't been exposed to because there are environments you refuse to be in. There was a time in my life where I wouldn't go certain places because I felt uncomfortable because people were in a different place than me. I know I'm the only one in the room that's ever felt that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be by myself. There were some places, Keisha, that I, that, that I wouldn't go because I knew that they, they, they had a different lifestyle. They, they had more money than me. And, and, and so I was uncomfortable being around them because I, because I saw, they, they didn't put it in my face at all, but, but I saw what level they were at, so I was uncomfortable, so I, so I wouldn't go to those environments. As I love it, as, as my big brother Jamal always says, your level of exposure determines your level of success. And I declare you that there's some levels you have not gone to because you're uncomfortable being in certain environments that God needs you to be in. Well, I don't want to be in that environment. I'm Get comfortable being uncomfortable. 2 Kings 5, 10 to 14, I want to close with the Old Testament. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, comfortable. Wave his hand, comfortable, over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Papar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? My man, he, he like, he like, in, in there some, in the, in the, a better, better water I can get in Mark? He's like, I got to get in this water? I, got, I'm, I don't know who I am. I got to get in that. Can I go get in this water? This water better.
Marie, she said, could not wash and damn and he cleansed. So he turned and went off in rage. Verse 13, Naaman's servants went to him and said, my father, is a, if the prophet had told you to do to some great thing, would you have not have done it? How much more than when he tells you? Wash and be cleansed. So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and he became clean like that of a young boy. Some of you are praying to be clean, to be restored, to be renewed. Perhaps relationship issues, sibling issues, issues with your parents. You want something new. Was if you heard it said many times before, in order to get something new, you got to do something new. And it's simple. It starts with me. It starts with me. I had to clean out my storage. I had to clean out what I was holding on to so that my family can be free. I know and understand it's not just about me, but it does start with me. When I do what I'm supposed to do and I go where I'm supposed to be, not only would it free me, but it will free everybody that's attached to me. They're dependent upon me to be everything God has called me to be. I declare to you that today is the day that we need to sit down and look at what we're holding on to and ask ourselves what we need to get rid of. If you're in a body, and there's something that you're holding on to that you know is holding you back and can potentially hold your daughters back, your sons back, your spouse back. You're standing on your feet. You're acknowledging in front of God. God, I'm too full of trauma. I'm too full of baggage. I'm too full of anger. I'm too full of bitterness. Like, like, like God, like, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to talk to him. I, he, you know what he did? You hold on to that. You got to let it go. I, I, I'm going to wait for him to call me. I'm going to wait till she calls me. She, no, no, no. You make the first move. You said you're a Christian. You said you're a man of God. You said you're a woman of God. That's what you said. So if you are a woman of God, how are you not acting like a woman of God? God, we don't want to be hypocrites anymore. We don't want to say that we follow you, but we don't follow you with action indeed. Father, we, we don't want to be counterfeit anymore, Father, that when we place under the light, Father, when we face with a challenge, Father, an obstacle, Father, help us to respond the way a godly man responds. Help us to respond the way a godly woman responds, Father. We want to be the example, Father, so you can brag on us. Like, what, have you considered my son TJ? Have you considered my daughter? Father, you can brag on me. Because I know in your word, you'll never give us more than we can bear. We're ready, Father, to go to the next level. And we know that in order to go to the next level, there's some things in the past that we got to let go of. We got to delete so we can move forward. Father, bless every single person that's standing right now, Father, by the sound of my voice. Come count their heads to the soles of their feet, Father. Father, give them freedom, Father. Release them, Father. And let us never pick it back up, Father, so we can move forward. Because in your word you say, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Father, help us to see it. Help us to hear it, Father. Help us to understand what you have for us. We love you. We praise you. We magnify. We glorify your name. Let every chain be broken, every yoke be destroyed, and every generational curse be cast down. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let every believer say amen, amen, and amen. We really appreciate you spending your day with us, and we look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday evenings at 6 for Wednesday Night Word with Pastor T.J. Tyus. For all of our announcements, upcoming events, and special programming, 
please visit our social media pages on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Your tangible support of this ministry makes all the difference in the world, and we can't thank you enough for your commitment. If you'd like to support this ministry, please use our cash app at dollar sign APOC Global. If you prefer a more traditional approach, visit our website at www.apocministry.org. On behalf of pastors Thomas and Tyus, their wives and families, and the whole of your A Place of Change ministry family, until we meet again, be blessed.